Well, hello again, Joe Brownlee here with Palm Beach State College, and you're watching the final exam review series for Intermediate Algebra. This is question number five, so let's get to it. All right, so the questions, or the directions rather, for question number five are graph the linear inequality in two variables. All right, so number five. And the inequality that they give us is x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 6. All right, we'll put that aside and work with what they've given us. Well, my first suggestion would be not to let this inequality sign scare you. For the purposes of getting this uh, equation which has been given to us in standard form let's go ahead and pretend for the moment that this inequality is really an equal sign just so that we can take this equation uh, from standard form to uh, slope intercept form so that we can easily plot this line on a graph so the first thing I would do is let's go ahead and just rewrite this equation but again instead of using the inequality sign, I'm going to go ahead and use an equal sign and we'll change the color just so that we remember that we've altered this. In. All right. And if I'm putting this in y equals mx plus b, my next step would be to go ahead and move my x over. And when I do that, I'm left with 3y equals negative x plus 6 and then last but not least we're going to go ahead and divide by 3 on both sides so y equals negative 1 over 3 x plus 2 all right so now that I've taken my equation from standard form to slope intercept form now I can go ahead and graph this line uh, without any problems because I have my slope and I have my y intercept now let's go ahead and rewrite this equation using our inequality sign just so we have that as a point of reference. All right, so if I take my graph, and again, I'm going to be plotting y is greater than or equal to negative one over three x plus two. And for the purposes of graphing, again, we don't treat this uh, inequality sign any differently than we would from, um, from a, an equal sign. So if I wanted to graph this line, uh, I would simply go to positive 2 on my y-axis. I'll go ahead and plot that. And then I'm going to use my slope, which again we remember from question 1 is rise over run. So this is telling me I'm going to do uh, negative 1 so that's my rise but since it's negative I'm really falling and I'm gonna run in the positive direction three units so let's fall one and then run to the positive direction three one two three all right and again let's fall one and run positive three one two three all right, so now that I've got at least three points, I can go ahead and connect these dots. And we have to remember, before I do this, so let's go ahead and review quickly. When we are plotting inequalities, remember, if I have a greater than uh, or equal to or a less than or equal to, my line is going to be solid when I graph. If I simply have a greater than or less than, I'm going to have a dotted line. Now if I go back to my original equation, I have a greater than 
or equal to, and so I'm going to go ahead and use a solid line for this graph. There we go. So that is our inequality graphed on the, uh, or our line rather, graphed on to the rectangular coordinate system. But because this is an inequality, I know that I'm going to be shading, meaning I'm going to be filling in either above this line or below this line where all of the solutions are that make this inequality true. So in order to do that, we're going to use what's called a test point. And the easiest test point to use is the origin, which is at 0, 0. And we can always use the origin as a test point so long as my line does not go through the origin. And we can clearly see from this graph that my line does not go through the origin. And so let's go ahead and use uh, 0, 0 as a test point. And what we do is we simply plug in the point 0, 0. And remember, this is my x, this is my y. We plug it back in to the uh, original inequality to determine and see if we get a true statement. If we get a true statement, then since the test point in this particular example is below my line, that means any point that I choose below this line will give me a true statement. However, if I plug in 0, 0 into my original inequality and I get a false statement, then I know every point below the line will give me a false statement. So let's go ahead and see what we get. If I plug in 0 for x plus 3 0 for y is greater than or less than 6. Well, when I reduce, I get 0 plus 0 is greater than or equal to 6, which is just 0 is greater than or equal to 6. Is that a true statement? No, it is not. That is a false statement. And so, since the origin point was below this line, and I got a false statement. That means every single point, if I were to choose below this line and plug it in for the original inequality, would also give me a false statement. So that means none of these points are solutions to the given inequality. And so right away I know that, well, since the solutions are not below this line, they have to be above this line. And so that means any point that I choose above this line, if I were to plug in, will give me a true statement. So just to prove that, let's go ahead and choose one. So let's go ahead and choose, oh, I don't know, 5. We'll do 5, 5. That's well above the line, okay? So we're going to use our new test point. And we're going to use 5, 5. All right, and again, remember x and y. So let's go ahead and use our original inequality and plug in this information. So 5 plus 3 open 5 is greater than or equal to 6. Well this is 5 plus 15 is greater than or equal to 6. 20 is greater than or equal to 6. Yes, that is a true statement. And so you can see since in this particular example 5, 5 was right here, well above my line, I got a true statement. So any, any point that I choose above the line for this particular uh, inequality will also give me a true statement. All right, hopefully that was a helpful review. I will see you all at question number six. Thanks for watching.